Hi everyone and karibuni sana to our webinar this evening. Thank you so much for tuning in and coming on time. It's always great to see you. A huge welcome to everyone who's tuning in from LinkedIn, YouTube, and also those who are following along on Twitter. Thank you so much for taking the time to be a part of this conversation. We promise you it's going to be insightful. And a special, special shout out to the Elevate HR community members. Always a pleasure to see, to see you attend our webinars. If you're interacting with Elevate HR Africa for the first time, allow me to quickly introduce who we are to you. Elevate HR is a cloud-based platform specifically for the African market that lets you easily onboard and manage your employees' payroll, leave, and performance. We also have a community of HR professionals across Africa. And the main goal of the community is to enhance professional development and networking amongst its members. So if you're a people professional and you're not part of our community, oh, you're missing out. Please consider joining us as well. So without further ado, I will introduce our panelists for the evening. I hope you're ready and excited for the conversation. It's pretty timely. We know just how uh, important analytics is. So uh, I'd like to introduce our first panelist, who is also the moderator of the session, CHRP, Mark Kamau, who is passionate about people and more specifically about HR analytics. So. Mark Kamau, Karibu Sana to the stage. Really excited to have you join us this evening. How are you? Hi, hi, Pili. How are you? I'm, I'm doing well. good. How are you doing? Very well as well. What are you looking forward to the most? Okay. Uh, personally, what I'm looking forward to learning today is how you can use the analytics to make strategic decisions and to be able to make the strategy in the HR department because you can have the data, you can analyze it, but how will you use it to make the decisions? Yeah, so basically that's what I'm looking forward to learning today. Awesome, amazing. And I'd love to also welcome our second panelist, a speaker for the day. He's not new to most of us, um, passionate about HR analytics, uh, Nelson Oguda, CHRP Nelson Oguda, Karibu Sana to the platform. So happy to have you join us as well. Hi, Nelson. Hi, how are you? I'm very well. How was your evening? How's your evening coming along, actually? <laughs> uh, it's okay. I find it's an awesome mm -hmm. today being a Tuesday and uh, we're in the middle month. So my level of work has reduced yet to pick up on 27th. <laughs> yeah all right all right 27th to Nangoja. all right so I'll, I'd like to hand this conversation over to Mark but before then we'll play a short ad just to talk a little bit about Elevate HR and then right after Mark I'll hand it over to you as well so all right
Hi, hi, good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to this session. Uh, my name is CHRP Mark, and I'm happy to join you in this HR analytics session for the day. And with us today is none other than uh, award-winning uh, trendsetter himself, Mr. The Management, uh, is commonly known, Oguda The Management. Um, as I've said, Mr. Data Analytics himself, HR Data Metrics, if you want to know anything about him, just talk to him. And uh, Mr. Nelson, I don't know if I've left any other title. I might have left because uh, people know you with a lot of name and uh, a mentor to many and I uh, want to welcome him in this discussion. And uh, Nelson, maybe you can start by telling us what I've left out. And uh, as you kick start, maybe you can just tell us what it is when we are talking about HR anal analytics. What is it uh, just for a start? Okay, uh, thank you, Mark. I would not want to go deep into introductions because uh, I'm actually vying for a village elder position. So when I grow up, I would want to be there. So <laughs> I'm trying to gather my data today so that when the time reaches, um, fair enough. So thank you very much. And thanks to Elevate HR. I think the team that I've been engaging, we've been engaged for long. I think this is now the second year I'm engaging with Elevate. And I've just seen uh, a good uh, advert there that they put up in the HR systems. It is what I actually do because without systems, analytics will be difficult. Remember, systems has to help you make your work easier. So I've seen they have a good system and uh, we, we're looking forward to hosting them to our HR Tech Talk every Thursday. So I want to believe the team is here and they're able to understand and bring it so that we can learn more about their system. We also learn what is the new thing that is there. So Mark, thank you very much. And I believe this session will be a good one. Apart from me being a HR analyst, I also do general HR. People think that because I do maths, I don't know <laughs> the other aspects of HR. But before you do analytics, you must have the domain expertise of the field. So I'm a qualified HR. I practiced HR for seven years, general HR. Then now analytics came in after my, my fourth year. Yeah, so that's, that's who I am and what I'm looking forward to. Thank you. OK. That is Nelson for you. Uh, so, Mr. Nelson, uh, when we are talking analytics, uh, somebody back there may want to do HR analytics, but uh, from a professional view, uh, which tools are you supposed to use in HR analytics or which part of HR analytics will give you the best data so that you can be able to use the same in uh, making decisions? <laughs> I, I am a Christian and sometimes I read the Bible and uh, Moses was asked, what do you have in your hands? So that's where I always start. What do you have? Uh, as a HR, what are you having that you can use? And uh, just before we get into the tool that you need to use, because tool sometimes does not, that doesn't matter because analytics has got three levels. There is a first part, which is more of administration, which is just data collection and cleaning. Yeah. Then now there is the analyst who now will do the analysis and a, a more of a specialist. Then remember this person has got someone on top. Now, now this, this is now the, manager, the managerial level where someone is now sitting down with the insight that you generate. Now they're able to make decisions. So remember someone make decisions sometimes doesn't even have the analytical skills that you're talking about, but they can see beyond what you as analyst were seeing in cases where you are not able to marry data that you have with the current market environment, something like that. So, so, uh, so either way now, in terms of tools now, and we now we, we now after understanding what you actually need to understand, then at the lowest level of analytics, when you want to start analytics, I said that when I starting my this, I didn't know that I was doing analytics by then, but I was actually doing it. When I worked first at Crown Paints, what I did there was uh, I converted CVs into into an Excel, a soft copy. They, uh, my, I had a small office there, so we are doing data collection. So CVs were being dropped, physical. So one day I was told, can you take for machine operator from those CVs that you have? It was tiresome. So next time I decided, that let me key this data into Excel. So data entry in Excel is key starting point. 
Do you know how to key in data? Do you understand that data that are keying in? Do you understand what age is all about? Uh, it, is, it is amazing that someone can bring to you uh, uh, calculating employee age and they're saying that the employee age is two. Yeah, I should tell you that you are not doing the right data entry. So those are things I was saying that at the start, do you able to understand, can you use Excel? Another thing that you actually should be actually be doing or be understanding, can you use data collection tools? The online ones, do you know how to use Google Forms? Do you know how to use Microsoft Forms, the Jot Forms, and other many forms that we also have that you should be understanding to use? Yeah, then now when now you become an analyst, now you're trying to analyze what you have to derive insights. Then Excel will still take part of, uh, part of your time. I spend most of my days at work on Excel and the HR system that I have. So when you understand Excel and a bit of intermediate and advanced, then you can actually do analytics. You don't need to understand R as a beginner or Python as a beginner or any other soft, soft, sophisticated tools. So you can use R. And I just want to uh, make a little joke. For those of us who also did degree and all did my masters, we we never took serious SPSS. <laughs> yes, it's also a good tool that you should be using. Actually, when now you want to graduate from Excel, you should be now moving to SPSS, which also a good one. Then now at the topmost level, what you need to understand is how do I understand visualization? Remember, you are the boss going to present data. So do you know how to use PowerPoint? Can you say present, give me this in this way? So at the top level, presentation, visualization skills would be another thing. So if you can use, uh, we, we have now various, depending with your, with your company, but I always go with PowerPoint. If your company is using PowerPoint, which is available, then you can use that for visualization and make your simple animations and have your data correctly because you can actually link Excel to PowerPoint so that when you do a change, it changes the other one. So I believe that is a simplest form and immediately, in short, I'm saying that learn how to use Excel. <laughs> if you don't have a system, learn how to use Excel. You'll be you, you'll be acing it actually. That's why I started also, and I believe you can start there from no grounds. Yes. Ah, okay, that's very insightful, Mr. Nelson. Eh? But uh, somebody might be sitting down and say, "No, I have the data, and uh, the data I have might be junked up. I have specifically for a HR profession." I might be having data to deal with recruitment. I have data to deal with training. I have data to deal with payroll. Uh, from your years of experience, do you have any critical part of the HR whereby you can say, if you have this data specifically for this part in HR, it can be the best used in making decisions going forward? We say data is the oil. So depending with what you have, it is the oil. So you see, an analysis now will depend with what, what are you looking to solve? So you can have data, yes, but there's no problem with it. So you're, you're not going to solve anything. Yeah. So you can have very good data on training. But we, our focus for this company is about performance management. So training might just be a smaller part of performance management. So you need more than just that. So good data will depend now. Now, let, let, uh, let's say... Uh, I graduated good data, now you are at a next level, will be dependent on what do you want to solve or what are your objectives. So every data is a good data. So whichever part that you have, as long as it's going to bring insights and enable decision making, that's why you do analysis. Insights and decision making, all those two. If you have the data that can show you that, then that data is good data and you can start from there. But always marry it with the, the company objectives. What are the objectives? Like now, I know we have an objective for this session. So each of us should be checking what do we, are my objectives being met? So within this session, meaning you came here and you are having, so someone just interested to see Nelson and Mark. Someone is interested to see, can I get some information from it? Someone would want to get uh, who, who was there so that I can talk to after this. Yeah, so that, so it, it means it, it has got various facets. So it is about the objectives in short, yeah. Oh yeah. So you have. Uh, let's assume now you have your objectives. You have already. You already have your data. You've analyzed, and now you want to present it to your the person who is supervising you, uh, so that you can be able to make that decision. So maybe before we go to the decision making part, you have talked about Excel. You have talked about PowerPoint. How are we supposed to present the data so that the person who is consuming it will be able to relate with it 
and be able to understand with it whether they are in the hr profession or maybe in the finance uh, department they will be able to get that data and be able to say yeah you can use this data to make a decision because you have already gotten the data now you have collected the data you have analyzed now how will you be able to use it so that you can convince the next person that the data i have is speaking and we need to take action in this now video analysis uh what i came to realize one once i was in this field now deep into analytics is that you don't work for yourself <laughs> as long as someone gave you a job to do you don't work for yourself you can only advise yeah so what you need to do is to you need to brace yourself with uh, all possible tools that are there that you can actually use yeah so we've talked about excel powerpoint uh Kiwili. the the people even have excel for the presentation and they've got even word so it is them that will choose how do they want to see it i have worked in places where they want excel dashboard someone will want that excel to be hosted in a sharepoint somewhere someone will want it in a power bi someone wants it in word document and saved in pdf so sometimes you can only advise and say i think it would be better if you're going to present it a live presentation then i would use excel dashboard power bi dashboard or powerpoint but if they're going just to read for their consumption, then I would convert that into a PDF or a Word document where they can read and edit. So now they'll tell you where do they want to use it. Or you should now use what you the instructions that you got, that this is the best way that I can actually present my data. I've been to conflicts where <laughs> I went ahead and do and did mine in Excel dashboard. I was told who, who wants the dashboard? I don't want dashboard, I want PowerPoint. Then I went somewhere, I did PowerPoint. Now you want Excel. We want what we want power bi so it is the consumer that will be the decision so if it is you doing for yourself then you can choose which one you are comfortable with yes but sometimes don't be afraid to say that i don't know how to use that that other visualization tool unless you use this which is closer to it or allow me to 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 learn about then i present if time allows so remember dare to be vulnerable to be taught because again sometimes managing upwards not easy you have to be vulnerable sometimes because you might be having your insights but your insights may, might, might be talking what the team doesn't want to hear <laughs> so again how do you change your data to represent the same the same uh, information but in a different way that qualifies your data again remember if things get worse up there it will be you to be called to explain how you get to that yes. Yeah, so my next, my next question, eh? I want to base it and uh, I want to put yourself in um, the shoes of somebody, a HR practitioner somewhere, who has been told now we need you to get data for us, analyze it and give us feedback so that we can be able to make this, uh, this decision or we can be able to lay down a strategy in regards to the next step that you are going to take. But behind this uh, HR profession, uh, maybe the people he or she is presenting the data to, they have never engaged with the same. Uh, you've told us uh, there is somebody who requests for an Excel dashboard, somebody who requests it to be, uh, to be converted into a PDF. Maybe you might tell them which is the best format for a beginner to be able to present that data so that they can be able to interpret yeah okay uh so now we're talking about the person who is we are taking the data to who yeah yeah yeah. Them, right? yeah now it's the first time they are taking they are uh, taking the data they have never had the data uh, yes, about it the same. yeah okay so now uh within analytics also there's a skill that you also need to learn stakeholder management it's more of a hrbp role stakeholder management so how do you manage your stakeholders? Remember, sometimes for the one who knows one plus one is equal to two, everybody knows it is three. But how you will explain your two and uh, reject the three? Yeah, must be based on your calculation that can be shown. So you need to be also able to humble yourself. I don't know how we call that in <laughs> in the field of HR, but humility comes in in such kind of scenarios. Remember, we even analysis we have got hypothesis, null and, and alternative hypothesis. One is correct, one is no, one is disputing, one is accepting. So now, uh, 
how do you say that I'm accepting this or rejecting the other one? So you have to base it on calculation that can be understood. So the best thing that you need to do is to now, if the top person that you're going to present a data to or a supervisor doesn't understand, then look at the most simplest tool that can be used. And that's what most people have interacted with Excel. And if not Excel, because Excel will fear formulas. Well, once you mention Excel, it's formulas, right? So if you're having pictures or tables, then you'll either stick to Word or to PowerPoint. It will be easier. Yeah. So should someone ask you about why is it not three but four? They need to go down and, and, and bring first accept from the where they're coming from. Ask them how did you get your four or your three? Then they'll if they're good enough, they'll tell you how they came to three or four. Then now you tell them, okay, this is up to here is correct, but you need to move from here to the next step. So if, so if, you, have that, if you have that chance, then that's how you will be able to do it. Because sometimes, remember, when you're doing analysis, I will give this scenario. Every business has got their own objectives, right? They want to achieve. So uh, a good example would be you, you want to go and do a CSR activity. And as your activity, you want to go and do it somewhere else, and you've been given the budget, and you're expecting this number to come up. So what if the number doesn't come up, and now your boss has said that, no, we, we were 30, but you know very well that you were 28 or you are 25. So this, this is how you can say, okay, we, we can use the word averagely or about 30 people so that you can manage the 30. You see now, if you use averagely or, or a number about to 30 staff were present, now it makes their 30 looks real, but know very well that it was 28 or 25. So again, communication skills and humility sometimes come in, but remember, use the most simplest formula most simplest tool to be understood. I faced that challenge and I was told during my uh, growth sessions, I've been told, can you simplify things for people? So that's where we are. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Quite informative. I've had be humble, communicate well, and even the wordings can play a very big part role even after you have that data, you've analyzed. And guys, as you have heard, keep it simple as you can. And uh, Mr. Nelson, I've heard you talk about the challenges that you have faced. And I've known, being a trendsetter, especially in HR analytics, uh, there are those challenges that maybe you can highlight for somebody who is currently doing the HR analytics or the intent to venture into this field of this exciting field of HR analytics. So, what are some of the challenges? Because I'm sure it wasn't just like I analyze, I present the data, it's accepted, a decision is made using the same. Maybe you can highlight just the major challenges somebody might face. Number one, uh, you must be able to welcome rejection <laughs> with your presentation. That is the fact that it wasn't easy for me to accept because <laughs> I know it is correct, mathematically be proven, but someone is saying, no, it is wrong, according to my knowledge. So first you have to accept that there's rejection. So rejection doesn't mean that you have done a wrong thing. It means that someone else did not accept it. So, but not even you, because they're still working with you, right? So they don't, they, they didn't even accept you. They, they, they just disputed your report. So accept your figures. I remember some time back we did a survey, we got results, then it had to go through a second person who is not even part of the team to confirm. The person came back with the wrong results and I couldn't even defend <laughs> my right results. So accept rejection, that's one. Number two, uh, during this journey, uh, you get to learn businesses. And uh, one thing that also leads to stagnation at some point is when you take longer to understand the business that you are in. Yeah. So I know if someone checks my he will be asking, my LinkedIn will be asking, what's wrong with this guy? Talk about company and he has been moving. So are you quick to adapt? So adaptability sometimes will also bring a problem where you're presenting your information, but you have less information about the company. You have less information about the operations. So again, challenge will be now who trusts you with that data so that you can actually analyze it. Who trusts you? Sometimes they hold data from you. <laughs> so how will you analyze? You have you have, you, have, you you already have your performance management score or a training. Now you want to measure the ROI, but nobody wants to give you information. So how will you do that? So you have to accept that that information can be hoarded from you. 
and that you also might also take time to understand. And when you're facing rejection, as you accept rejection, also as you face it, get to learn because someone might be having something which is half baked, but you didn't have it. So if you just had their point A, where they're starting from, which you actually forgot or did not understand, then your answer could have been correct. And they cannot go beyond that. I don't know people tell me about regression analysis. They know what regression is all about. But if you don't use it, you don't give the answer with that formula, it will be a problem. So we need to understand where people are coming from and that. Then uh, you talked about uh, lack of company knowledge that you also need all or, 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 or unlimited or uh, limited company information. Another thing that you also get to accept some time back, someone called me for a gig to go and do analysis. So I went to the company and when I was at the reception, he came and said, you are this young boy. <laughs> so automatically, uh, that acceptance was not there. So act act actively now, that is what 2020 when I just started doing analysis, actively now coming out to do it. So again, how do you accept that? That now you're, the paradigm shift has, is here and I'm the one to drive it. So I told him we are this, this, that, but it didn't come out clearly and uh, the gig was not given to me because i was too young to analyze their company data so again that's another thing that you also be able to accept at some times you might not be at that level people perceive you to be but it's not you the yeah, people always have got their own biases so accept and move on with yourself now challenge that will also come in is lack of your own information yeah you find yourself you don't know some of these things so you also have to accept you are you are asked something but you feel, eh, that one I don't know. So what do you do with it? Do you respond, I cannot do it? That's when we come to communication. You have to solve everybody's problem once you start doing analytics. Everybody will come with their own problems and you'll have to get them answers. Remember, you don't know what to do. So you're also at a risk of losing your, <laughs> your job at some point. Everybody wants an answer because you're now the analyst. So what do you do? Have someone you can, you can always talk to. That's why I've been trying to be around, to be available for everyone for mentorship and sometimes uh, answering questions. And that's how I came up with the app, analytics, HR analytics and metrics, so that getting few metrics should be easier. On your side, you don't need to call Nelson for an overhead metric. So if you go to uh, Play Store, you'll get my application there that you can actually use, HR metrics analytics, which will help you now do your things very fast. So have your own sources of data or sources of solutions, which can be people, internet, and uh, others that you have also books. You have, I also read a lot of books that I don't need to read. So I would say those are challenges that, that I faced majorly in growing in my career. And again, being that HR analytics is just something, it has been there, but now doing math is now the change. Doing math in HR. It has been done by finance team. But doing math now in HR solely is a challenge, which which now compass the other one of data, data holding and uh, acceptance. Yes, thanks. Uh, thank you very much, Nelson. And uh, maybe somebody somewhere may be thinking, now, we have data analytics. We have heard about HR data analytics. Uh, they might have gone further and had something to do with the ISO, HR data analytics. And uh, I'll request you maybe to briefly highlight about the ISO HR data analytics and Maybe a key takeaway for everyone who is participating in this session, they can have something to take away in regards to ISO, HR, data analytics and metrics. Okay. So the ISO is ISO 30 for 14, 30 for 14 of 2018, about internationally recognized HR metrics and reporting. So that's basically what it talks about. So it lists how, how metrics are calculated. Which they are saying in that ISO is that they're giving you a leading answers of what you should be doing, not that these are the actual metrics. That's also bring another challenge in HR. How you want to do your, your metrics, your turnover rate, you're not using ISO, but can be still correct. Some of us will use staff at the start of the month, some will use average, some will use at the end of the month. All those are turnover rate. But how consistent are you? So it talks about what are the principles of doing metrics. How do you do your reports? Yeah, and uh, I took advantage of that. And, and even the app that I talk about, app is also, the metrics that are there are metrics as per the ISO. So if you use the app, you will be using ISO. So ISO is about just, just giving guidelines on how do we do the metrics? How, how do we do our reporting? What should your reporting do? 
what is, what is the role of HR analyst? Yeah. So and and HR and, and HR in general, and even showing you, telling you that if your company is small, what should you be using? What should you be comparing yourself to? So I get someone, I ask them, where do you work? They say that we, we work here, we have 50 employees. They're asking you, uh, but I know you have got global, global figures of uh, employee retention rate. So now we are talking about global. Your company is not even global. It is just starting. So you should be basing your things in terms of your company improvement. Then that's where you also come in and tie your ISO with uh, also ISO on QMS 1001 of quality management system. So that you say that, okay, now I know our company are 20, but let us improve step by step. Because at, at the global level, you cannot play with them. So where do you need to start? That's what it guides and takes you through, yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Nelson. And uh, guys, you can keep on asking your questions in the chat sections, and we shall be able to review the same and attend to the same. So as we are coming maybe to the last bit part of our discussion, Mr. Nelson, maybe from where you sit, being a trendsetter in this field, uh, maybe you can tell us the best practices or how, what are the best practices? in the HR data analytics, or as a HR data analytic person, which practices would you consider professionally right or accepted uh, so that we can be able to move further on the same? OK, I want to be brief, and there are not so many. Number one is for your best practice now, there's this that we call data privacy. You will see a lot. That's why for you to be trusted first, you must be able to profess that you are very secretive and you'll be able to keep it confidential and only share where it is, where it is needed to be shared. So that is number one. Are you able to be, are you able to keep that data private? Then now, uh, if you're going to dive into an, uh, an into analytics, it will also be good for you to understand the concept. Yeah, because uh, it, it is a new thing. So you don't understand the concept then it becomes a problem in your practice. You'll face challenges that actually, if you are actually built well enough in the foundation of HR itself, you'd actually move better. So the concept of analytics starts from HR, understanding HR itself. So do you understand HR? And sometimes when you're doing analytics and you are, and you are reviewing um, disciplinary management, you ask someone, how do we do it here in Kenya or in East Africa, in Uganda, if I'm in Uganda? Then the HR cannot even explain where the case starts and where the case ends and all possible actions to be taken. So how, what will you be analyzing? So don't jump into analysis because you're not know analyze, but do you have the domain expertise? It will propel you. Then learn how to use the systems because systems make your work easier and data, now you don't need to ask people for data because they're always there. So it's also your role as an analyst to ensure that you have clean data, meaning you must be able to to propose good systems to be used to enable you to do your work. Remember, as an analyst, I said before, you don't work for yourself. Whatever you are doing is someone else's work. It's like, just like an auditor who is coming to audit you, but he didn't even do it. So as an analyst, you come and analyze what you didn't, you didn't even do. So if you don't have data collection, which is, uh, which is done uh, in a clean way, you're having problems. So those three are what I would just encourage now for now that there are three critical as you, as you want to start. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Nelson. That was very informative. And I hope, guys, you are keen in your questions in the comment section. And uh, just to say a key takeaway as we wind up this is, as of now, I know most of us have learned, if you want to make that presentation in HR data analytics, key is you must be humble, have good communication skills, and make sure your data is right. Just say, understand the organization, and remain objective. Thank you very much, Nelson. I've learned a lot from my end. And thank you very much. I will, guys, keep on sending your questions. And we shall have Pili, back to you, Pili, so that we can wow, have the you. other part of the session. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Nelson. I'm really loving the conversation alongside so many people uh, on LinkedIn. I, we can see the comments. Alice, 
Thank you, Rogers, for contributing as well. I want to move to you, Jennifer, for a minute just to talk about how systems can also um, help in the process of decision making as families come to an So I'd love to hear from Kefa some of the tools. And I think also, Nelson, you could also comment on this as well. So, Kefa, I'd love to hear your opinion on that as well. Okay. Um... Hello everyone, so I'm um, Keva, uh, product lead at Elevate, and yeah, my whole goal is uh, really uh, understanding insights from the market driven by some of our customers to also shape the product to provide such analytics. And thanks a lot, uh, Nelson. Those are very insightful uh, remarks. So probably to take um, up from what Nelson has been saying in regards to analytics, uh, the very first thing I've had is clean data. And yeah, I, clean data actually begins from the process an employee joins the organization because with most systems, how, how, how you capture the data from the very start is what will lead towards the output or the insights or uh, for what the system will show towards the end in regards to reports. And I'll narrow down to, let's say, like in Elevate case, you know, uh, feedback from, uh, with real life scenarios from feedbacks we've encountered uh, while working directly, uh, yeah, with some of our customers, potential customers, and some of how they've leveraged some of their insights to really drive their business. So we play probably at the point whereby uh, you're looking for a system early on, uh, that could be on the payroll management, uh, mostly payroll management, co-HR, leave management. Those are the like whenever you're transitioning from the Excel to adopting a system. And from the onset, uh, the inputs you capture when onboarding an employee, um, the general information, uh, the salary information that, and I'll show you towards just a small slide demo on some of the analytics are uh, uh, building or uh, through the system. And probably let me start with um, when onboarding probably an employee, some of the data that personal data that you need to capture, for example, you might uh, date of birth, let's say, or their, uh, why is that important? So I'll give you a scenario in regards to one of our customers had requested us to give them an output. Uh, we worked with them to give them an output of all the employees and their date of birth. And why was why were they asking for this? It's to provide analytics in regards to um, how, how their workforce, um, yeah, let me not say ages, but how, yeah, uh, the distribution of, uh, so they could better plan uh, for things like, how many people are retiring very soon who are approaching that age so that they could start planning for succession planning and also planning for what cost will arise in regards to, let's say half of the employees are retiring almost at the same time. So such inputs drive such insights at the end of the organization. Another one, um, another one will be, um, yeah, uh, for, Compensation analysis, uh, things to evaluate compensation structures across the organizations. We've done a way whereby um, you can break month on month and see how your payroll costs are increasing so that you can even predict, um, you can predict like three months from now. This is what, uh, based on my hiring, based on how it's been increasing from past data, uh, in the next six months, probably this is what, our payroll costs will be, and does that match with what the business currently is outputting? So yeah, such patterns and trends related to like salaries and how many how like benefits, uh, what um, kind of benefits are we giving, and are they relating to the output of employees and so on? So such um, 
yeah, insights for small businesses really matter. And as Nelson was saying, you can't, uh, yeah, uh, you can't really start say like generating reports that are not really relevant to you at that uh, particular point. Uh, for models like the one we have in regards to salary advances, uh, some of the analytics you might or reports might really matter to you is what time do people take salary advances? That such an insight can be, you might see a trend probably in January. Yeah, the whole team takes advantage of salary advances. Why? Because probably December was when people spent money a lot, people going back to school. Yeah, trends around which periods and what categories of employees take advances a lot, what types of salary advances are being taken, if it's medical, probably it would drive an insight such as do we need to update our medical policies and so on. Um, leaves, the same, what's the liability of the company uh, in regards to leave in case uh, someone resigns with the liability. Such insights are what the systems really like ours are trying to yeah, solve. And probably um, I'll give just uh, probably share just a brief on some of the things we have and others that we really worked with our customers over time to do. So as Nelson has said, like you can use some tools to really come up with a vis vis visual aspect of it. But we've been trying to like see how can we bring the analytics uh, dashboard directly from the inputs that we've been capturing over a long time and improving while well, improving the system. What are some uh, yeah of the things that the inputs will vary uh, from the outputs? Like what I was saying, these are like the different payments month over month. Uh, your total deductions, how are they increasing from the last month, and how many employees in regards to that? How your different um, people distributed across the different departments, um, salary advances for that month. You can even continually filter how many, yeah, what's the total spend for this month. Um, you can filter as much as what's total spent in a year to see how this will just drive, yeah, if um, the businesses to see, okay, salary advances, most people are re requesting for this. So what are the total leaves that have been taken, uh, those that are pending, those who are on leave, yeah, and so on. Another area probably is um, low level uh, reports that we are looking to work on is such things as this an overview of your gender distribution, uh, probably you have 66%, 34% female, just, uh, and for this was driven by uh, probably one of our community members who works mostly in an NGO capacity, such uh, distribution in regards to gender were quite yeah, useful. And what are the different payroll trends? Again, the statutory deductions, the different, and then you can have very specified um, reports in a tabular view. Uh, and as you can see, the reason you mentioned inputs really matter and clean data matter. Same with systems. You just, you can filter out like the bio data. You can say on these filtered according to certain departments or all departments in all regions, in all projects. Uh, uh, filter the date of birth and the different ages. And then someone like Nelson can do some uh, extra analytics to tell you like this will be a burden in regards to people retiring or this is our work for South Fox is actually very young. So what kind of benefits uh, do we give them to retain them and so on. So these are some of the, yeah, these are some of the areas that we actually like uh, developing for based on a lot of insights on what small businesses are looking for. For example, leave, uh, what are the balances, what are the days used, total days used by all employees for this month and what's the leave liability and so on. Yeah, so uh, with that probably, yeah, I can say some of the product dynamics is working with people are looking to see how they can better um, improve based on the different inputs, improve how they report and what different business intelligence they can gain from this. So in that regard, uh, probably I'll give it back to 
to Pili. Over to you, Pili. Thank you so much, Kefa. That was really insightful. Like Kefa said, if you're looking for a tool to aid in your HR data analytics, please sign up on the link that is shared on the comments section. I'd just like to read a few comments before I hand it over to Mark for the Q&A session. Um, I, I see Roberto saying that he's agreeing that making insights palatable is key for the analysis to be acceptable to stakeholders. Um, there is a comment also by Alice Nakioni. Alice actually asks um, for us to expound on data privacy in Excel and other systems. Maybe Kepa, you could mention about data privacy now that you're talking about the systems uh, it could use for it, for instance, Elevate HR, and then Nelson can jump in to talk about the others as well. Okay, for data privacy from uh, the current law uh, for all systems, you have to abide as a data processor and apply um, yeah, in regards to what will you be doing in regards to data and apply the different policies that have been given. And also security of your data should not be shared outside. And yeah, thank you. Uh, and we've actually built some of these things in our systems through encryption, uh, through applying as a data processor. Yeah, so the system has handled that in a lot of ways, but also the rest of the panelists can speak uh, more in regards to that. All right, Nelson, we'd also love to hear your thoughts on that and then carry on with the rest of the Q&A. The data protection is there as per the act that we have in Kenya, which came into effect on uh, in May, yeah, last year. Now, <laughs> the issue is this, you can have all passwords and everything but it's personal yeah remember you even locking those excels and sending them out but you as the person or the next viewer how can they control their mind? integrity so to me that is the first key thing that you need to understand as a HR analyst that integrity must be with the hell uh, must be with the hell as you interview and then that's on then now number two is as you you also need to show have policies on who should view what, yeah? Because even a system, they have got system rights, who can do what? So once you have that, then now you are safe. But you can never say that 100%, you know, it will never leak. Have you ever had employees asking you, why is so-and-so paid higher than me? <laughs> then you tell them, did I tell you that? Then I don't know. You stop there, so that's it. And we say that HR has got sweet, HR has got sweet, sweet, sweet gossip. So you might be tempted, so don't be a gossiper. Also in uh, analytics space, yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Nelson. Uh, we have a question here from LinkedIn uh, who asks, now we are discussing about HR data analytics. Uh, they ask how, how can they get this role to be a HR data analytic? Now, being an analyst, uh, you have got two options. You get a job that requires the HR analysts the way I get, then I went into it, and uh, it's the direct. That means that that's now your full-time role. Or you'll get one that requires you to be a HR, but with analytical skills. So that's where I started actually. I started from a HR, normal HR with the analytical skills and system skills. So if you start there, it's even easier for you to sell your agenda than when you get a role purely on HR analysts. Now you don't do anything. I faced a challenge where I got one job, the first job, an analyst, I was purely an, a, an analyst. So I didn't understand how to work with the teams because I've been doing my own data. So now I'm here, I need to analyze someone else's data, they are late, how do I communicate that? You start throwing words and I, I can't do it. <laughs> if you don't submit in time, I don't know how, I will not help you. Submit in time, then I do my work. So if you start from a point where you now do uh, amongst a team, that you start as a, as a generalist with an, a, analytical uh, uh, duties or becomes even better. So don't actually look for a role in a analytics. There are very few, also in the Kenyan ecosystem. I think in other ecosystems that are there in Europe and America, I've seen a lot of them. But here in Kenya, East Africa, you still get a HR role with analytical skills. So that's where you can start and make it a superb role for everyone to undertake, yes.
Okay, on mute. Okay, Nelson. Thank you very much. I'm sure uh, we have heard their rules outside there and how you can ease that rule. So there is another question, Nelson. This one I believe it's yours. Uh, we discussed something to do with the ISO in regards to HR data analytics. Maybe uh, you can uh, you can tell us more, or you can just repeat what you said, uh, expounding more on the same. Uh, because there's a question here that says we do repeat the same on what uh, basically is all about the ISO standards in HR data analytics. Okay. Uh, what ISO will always do, ISO will give a framework of how you should do your things. And in the ISO standard we have ISO 3014 of 2015, of 2018 talks about the framework of internationally recognized HR metrics and and, uh, and reporting. So how do you actually report? How do you, how do you do a metrics? Remember, metrics are part of the reports. So once you do that, you'll be able to now uh, be able to get what you can compare with others. Yeah. So number one, within that ISO, they give sample or how how can create metrics. So you get that. And number two, they'll give you a principles on where should one apply the metrics. They'll give you another one on what should be your focus when you are to benchmark. That's the way I gave an example of you, you're looking for a global, a global data, a global uh, metric, yet your company is just starting in the last one year. So your customers are not even global. Your employees are, if you look at where they have worked before, they're not even been at the global platform they just been local platform so in that scenario if you're going to use the global metrics to check on that it will not be giving you the right indicator so you need to look for your peers you need, you need to if in most cases i would tell people that don't even start looking for your peers because because you don't know how they're doing their own metrics can you look at qms can you now go into quality management system continuous improvement so we scored 20 percent turnover rate this year we want to score 15 next year it's very easy. You don't need to, to start uh, looking for difficult things. You'd be told by other providers to buy. I will tell you that before I give you that, you have to pay me. Use QMS. I'm giving you that for free. Go read QMS and understand how QMS will work. So that's what metrics, that's what the ISO does and they will enable you to understand what actually you need to be working on. And I say that the app that I developed, which is in Play Store, which are metrics, metrics and analytics, will give you the metrics as per the ISO standards, and it's free actually. And I also did, went ahead and those of us who are in NGO, I've also given you metric there for NGO line. So you are sorted, actually, yes. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, as you have heard, uh, with this age and era of chat GPT, we also have an app that specifically deals with HR analytics. You can always go there and maybe you can get more insights. So these are the questions I would just like. Maybe, yeah. You just mentioned the GTP and I want to caution us. <laughs> it almost messed me up. If I didn't know what I was looking for, I could have given a wrong information. So have your domain expertise first. Be a good analyst. Know your formulas first before you go there because it's a machine, right? And it gets data from every source that has been fed on. So Kefa will tell you that for it to work, it, it's getting other data from any other person. So it will pick the most the most frequent, which in this case might be a wrong information. So it can really mess you up and it will tell you, sorry, I didn't know. <laughs> then once you give it a right answer, I did sorry, I don't know. So as you use it, it's a good tool, but make sure that you know what you are doing. Understand your industry, understand your company. So then it will be a good tool for you to use. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Nelson, for that. I am quite sure most of us are using that tool in chat GPT and we have had from a first hand experience in regards to the same maybe Kefa as uh, we wind up in this uh, questions eh? uh, with maybe the company with health uh, maybe you can tell us some of the companies or the industries in which they are using the HR analytics so that they can be able to make their decisions and lay down strategies in HR uh, maybe you can give us the the industry or oh, yeah okay so actually they vary uh 
and data analytics really begins um, from a very sm smaller company whereby you started hiring a lot, uh, let's say from above 20 employees. Excel still works for you as you get bigger to around 50 around employees across all industries, uh, no matter what. It starts becoming, um, uh, okay, it starts becoming an issue uh, whereby now you really want to really form insights into, okay, who are who are my employees? What, uh, what's the distribution? Such things that start becoming sensitive. What's the distribution? What's the average age? Uh, it looks very simple probably by looking uh, at the office. At times probably you can uh, tell that, but presenting that to probably your investors, this is my monthly turnover against what I'm paying in regards to payroll, in regards to salaries. These are the kind of benefits I'm offering. And how do you match that um, in regards to a marrying and probably they'll continue. My hiring will continue increasing my uh, payroll costs, but does that match against my general turnover? Such things and and they range from small companies to uh, yeah, the different industries really uh, uh, cuts across. But what I'm, I I still emphasize is how you collect from the onset of all the employee joins. That's what uh, clean is all about, and that's what will determine your um, your output. And for any company, compliance matters, right? So uh, whenever you're setting up the system, that's when it tells you insights like, hey, your employees are not going on leave. So you have a big ability and for such a company. If, if employees are not going on leave and you're almost 50 employees, uh, even 20 of those are not really taking. And once they all leave, uh, could set your company a few <laughs> a lot of money in that regard so yeah. yeah thank you very much kefa as we have heard there is no big or small uh companies that can do hr analytics and uh, with that i want to say we have had a very informative and interactive session so let us do those analytics let us be wise and let make it communicate Thank you very much and have a lovely evening. I want to welcome uh, Madam Pili so that we can take the rest of the session over. Thank you, thank you, Master. It's excellent moderation. We have really enjoyed uh, listening in. Nelson, as usual, that was amazing. We've learned a lot, a great deal. Thank you, thank you so much for the insights that you've shared. Uh, just to conclude by urging you to look for Elevate HR Africa if you're looking for a partner in HR analytics, payroll, and lead management, we will be happy to re reach out to you on that as well. So please sign up on the link below. Otherwise, have yourself a lovely, lovely evening. See you at the next webinar. Bye.